So, today we're going to learn how to make our own ballistics gel. Um, these are a few items you're going to need. A thick measuring cup, a glass one, uh, Nox gelatin or unflavored gelatin of any sort, and a scale so you can do your uh, ratios correctly when you're trying to make this happen. So, in order to maintain the, subsistence, or the consistency of ballistics gel that you want, you are going to want for every single fluid cup of hot water, a single ounce of Nox gelatin or unflavored gelatin. So essentially, if I have four cups of hot water in here, I'm going to want four ounces of gelatin. So you'll measure that out and then stir it into the hot water. And we'll, we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, turn on scale. Put container down. Tear, make sure you're in the correct uh, increments of measurement. So we're in ounces. Again, we have four cups of hot water, so we need four ounces of this gelatin. And a little bit more is okay because you want to super saturate the water. Now that that's done, whatever, what you'll want to do is start stirring the water before you start pouring that in and that way it kind of distributes the gelatin a little bit better. I'm going to try and do this quick. And the hotter the water the better because it helps to dissolve the powder a bit. And I'm pouring this in fast so you guys don't have to watch how slow this process actually normally is. But don't do it as fast as I just did. Uh, because then you'll get clumps like this. And they'll be kind of gay to get out later. But essentially, this is what you want to do. Get out as much of these chunky things as you possibly can. These uh, dumplings. And then... Once you've stirred this as much as you want to, actually you should be using like an egg beater or something more practical than this, uh, you'll just take this and put it in the refrigerator for two hours. Okay. Now you can stop. Oh. <laughs> okay. And yeah, it's okay that it's this consistency because you'll be able to beat that out later. And now that you've done your mixing, set it in here for two hours and make sure you time that correctly. Try not to spill this on anything because it's very, very sticky. And then you'll find a way to kill the next two hours. Okay, so two hours has passed. You'll see it's kind of solid here. You can give it a smack, but it's not quite where it needs to be. And you see it still has these curds or whatever in it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a pot. Whoa, aggressive much. Okay, so put it on high, get this water to boil. And while it's reaching a boil, you're gonna wanna just set this down and leave it here until this becomes more viscous. And while this is heating up, you'll notice that these will start to dissipate. And once it starts to uh, actually stop being a solid chunk, you will stir this up a little bit I'm not going to record this whole thing heating up and boiling because it's going to take forever, but uh, yeah, so that's what, that's what we're going to wait on, and I'll get back to you as soon as this is more viscous. Okay, one more thing you're going to need is going to be your cast or your mold. I'm going to be using this plastic container. It's about 13 inches this way. It's about 8 inches right here, and it's about 4 inches tall. So it's not exactly standard for uh, FBI ballistics gel, but you know... It'll work well enough. I mean, you should be able to hit a target that looks like that. And again, you saw the block at the beginning, so that's what we're working on. Okay, so we're at a liquid form. You want to kind of glove up a bit because it gets very hot over here. When you're doing this, as you can see, we're at a more viscous uh, state here. But you can see there's still that solid chunk. As it heats up, you're going to want to keep stirring it enough to where you can agitate this concoction enough to get rid of some of these curds we were talking about earlier 
And once those are gone, we'll come back and pour it into our mold. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, most of the chunks are out, right? Right? Okay, so once you've got it to that point, you gotta try and get as much of this in there as possible. And yeah, I think this is as fluid as it's gonna get. So, get your cast ready. Uh, grab that. Set this here and make sure that you have a plastic that's thick enough. I got this at like Walmart or Kroger or something. Something like that. And either way, I know it's not gonna melt, but if you get a thin, something with thin, thin plastic, it will melt and you will be very upset that you put that in your refrigerator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out of the water because now it's in its liquid form. Slowly pour it into our cast here so you don't create too many bubbles because uh, that'll fuck you, or, uh, that'll mess it up a little bit. And then uh, you're gonna put it in the refrigerator for 12 hours. So we'll slowly take this out and be very careful not to spill any of this because it is, like I said, incredibly sticky slowly pour this and so this obviously will not f fill this whole mold but what I do is I repeat this process a couple times uh, but this will go into the refrigerator so as you're repeating this process that I've just shown you this will solidify a little bit and you could take this hot water put it in here and then re repeat the process like I said but um, it shouldn't affect the way that you layer or anything like that. It shouldn't affect the way that your your uh, gel turns out as you saw the one in the beginning. It seemed to be pretty solid. So I'll take this. <laughs> Smooth. And I will set it on top of my old block. And as you can see, like I said, it's only gonna be about that full, right? But if we repeat that process and keep filling it up after it solidifies, again, it's not going to do much to harm the uh, formation of your block. As you, as you can see, I had that first one that I showed you, and that one's in pretty good shape. So there you have it. Now, after you set it in the refrigerator next to the milk and all your drugs and uh, beer, what you'll do is let it sit there for 12 hours. So 12 hours later, come back, and it'll be solid. Okay, so I seem to have been incorrect on some things. Um, evidently, you want to keep it in the refrigerator for 72 hours. So, a couple days. A few days, anyway. Um, not a big deal. I have that block that you saw in the beginning has been in there for weeks. Uh, at 38 degrees, you want it at 40. Uh, to maintain FBI standards of testing, what you want to do is shoot a 177 pellet or BB from 10 feet away from your block and it should penetrate three to four inches at 595 feet per second. Now, I don't have a .177 air rifle, but what I do have is a 22 long rifle. So we'll start out by shooting that, uh, and then a nine millimeter, and then a 7.62 by 39, and see how it treats our block. So, one more thing, uh, you're gonna want to at least two of these blocks in front of each other, because as you'll see here, early, uh, you'll see in the tail of the tape, it turns out I didn't catch a single round, and I thought I caught at least two. But, uh, yeah, you make make two of these if you want to catch your round. And you can see the wound channel through one, but if you really want to see how far it's going to penetrate, put two, maybe three of these blocks in front of each other. Because that's how you're going to be better than me. So, just a little bit of information for you boys. All right. And make this quick. Okay, so the 22, it's a lot clearer than it looks on the camera, but it's somewhere in there, and I'll try to shoot it out, no doubt. So you could see, so it didn't seem to come all the way out. But it does seem to work. So let's try a 9. Okay, so I'm using the Smith & Wesson SD9VE. We've got some hollow points. So we'll see if they expand and if they can get caught in that block. We have to be quick though because it's getting hot. And this homemade uh, gel 
it doesn't hold up so well in the heat. And Did it come out? Mm -mm. I'm gonna flip it. Oh, it's coming apart. I will not flip it. <laughs> but just know there's a hollow point in there. Somewhere. It'll melt out eventually, but if you come from the side here, you can see a bit better. And over here, actually, you can see it did quite a bit of a yeah. Oops. Excuse me. Yeah, it's super see-through here, but not on here. It's... Yeah. So it sucked to get hit with this. Let's... Thanks. Ready? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, 762 by 39 out of my favorite rifle right now. Uh, don't mind my positioning. Ooh. Dang, that boy jumped. <laughs> right. So, as you can see, uh, it holds up well enough to be shot a couple times, but it's not by any stretch perfect. So I would say it works well enough to where you could see where you're shooting, but it, it's gonna do this after a couple shots. So don't expect to hang on to it for too long. It's a lot cheaper than, uh, you know, the stuff you spend $180 on. And especially if you're only gonna be able to shoot it a few times, I mean, yeah, I was pretty close with some pretty big, uh, with a big caliber or a larger caliber, and you could still see some of the channels through there. But it gives you a good idea of what this uh, would do to something or someone. So, yeah, I think it was uh, well worth the time to build or make it, you know. It's just not perfect. But anyway, are you still recording now? Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, that's all I've got for you. You can do this too, it's not difficult. It's very simple. And anyway, thank you for your time. And as always, God bless great state of Texas.